and we need to adapt. We want to encourage these taller buildings to be located near public transport routes and where daily needs like shopping and community services are just a walk away. This way, more people won't mean lots more traffic and congestion. More flexible use of our industrial land can help too. Some land can change to accommodate new work and local jobs, and some can provide housing for more people. We are also looking at ways that some housing can remain more affordable. Council is actively buying property to improve and purchase new parks and open spaces for all residents to enjoy. This is about thoughtful planning for a great future for everyone. The things we love, the vibrant and thriving shopping areas, our great heritage areas will still be here. But changes need to happen. We want to make sure that any development is of high quality and improves livability. So we're making decisions based on research, data, world's best practice and consultation with the community. Together, we can continue to make Moreland a great place to live for our long-term residents, our new arrivals and for those who'd like to live here in the future. Moreland, one community, proudly diverse. İsmim Cemal Akdeniz. Avustralya'ya 1974 yılında geldim ve e, ilk yerleştiğim bölgelerden bir tanesi Brunswick. Moorland bölgesi Türklerin yoğun olarak oturmuş olduğu bir bölgeydi. Bu bölgeye yerleşmemize neden oldu. Tabii ki ilk geldiğimizde dil bilmiyoruz. Bu nedenle e, dilimizi konuşan insanlarla beraber olmaktan e, daha doğal bir şey yoktu. O nedenle buraya geldik. Moorland bölgesinde e, ilk banka memurları e, Türkçe bilen elemanlar bulunmaktaydı. Bankaya gider, gaz ödemelerimizi vesaire bilmediğimiz konularda bize çok yardımları dokundu. E, bunlar e, toplumun diğer bölgelerinde oturan e, Türk toplumunun da e, Brunswick ve Coburg gel bölgesine gelmesini ne büyük imkan sağladı. E, erkekler e, ağır sanayide çalışma durumuna git gitmiştik daha fazla para kazanmak için. Bu bölgede e, çok e, tekstil fabrikaları vardı. E, eşlerimizde çok birçoğu tekstil ve yiyecek e, atölyelerinde, fabrikalarında çalışma kısmı için bu bölge bu, bu, bu bölge bizim tercihimiz olmuştu. Limorland'a geldiğimizde e, en sevdiğimiz yer Cemal Dayı'nın e, kahvesi diye bir yer vardı. O kahvenin içerisinde e, çorba, berber her şey mevcuttu. O zaman e, City'ye gittiğiniz zaman saat 5'te, 6'da her taraf kapalı, kapalı oluyordu. Biz yine e, bölgemize geldiğimizde e, Morland bölgesine e, işte Türk kahveleri açık oluyordu geç vakit kadar. Orada da arkadaşlarımızla oturup sohbet ederdik, muhabbet ederdik. E, biz ilk geldiğimiz zamanlarda e, bölgede e, sosyal, kültürel ağır, ağırlıklarımızı yönet, yönlendirmek için de 1985 yılında e, Morland Türk Derneği e, olarak bir derneğimiz e, oluştu. Bu dernek ilk başladığında spor aktiviteleri, daha sonraki dönemlerde de kültür değerlerimizin Avustralya toplumlarıyla, kü Avustralya kültürleriyle daha iyi iç içe yaşamamız için entegre olma yönüne büyük gayret gösterdik. Ve bu burada da biz dernek olarak başarılı olduğumuzu düşünüyorum. Moreland bölgesine geldiğim için de e, kendimi çok şanslı e, hissediyorum çünkü çok kültürlülüğü yaşamış oldum bu bölgede. E, gayet güzel bir şekilde e, benim e, birçok dostlarım, Avustralyalı dostlarımın olduğu gibi göçmen dostlarım var. İtalyanlardan, Yunan e, göçmenlerinden, e, Arap göçmenlerinden birçok dostlarımla beraber e, burada mutluluk içerisinde hep ilişkilerimizi devam ettik. When we set up studios in Oven Street, Brunswick, this gallery became a very prominent and important venue for all of the artists in the region. It is, it's the hub, I guess, for all our activity here. I've been associated with the, the Brunswick artist community for um, quite a few decades now, and the Coonahan, to me, has uh, supported me in a lot of exhibitions over over those times. The Coonahan Gallery offers an element of social justice. It's got a great collection. Uh, I've donated work to this art collection. 
and they've bought it in the, uh, the 80s when I was part of the Red Letter Community Workshop here. So I, I feel I'm intricately linked with this gallery. Uh, since, of course, the gallery was established, it's become a really important cultural scene here with arts and music and, and cafes and the cafe culture. And it all seems to revolve around this Coonahan Gallery. I think it's, uh, it's been really supportive of a lot of artists and uh, hopefully for many years to come. What I love most about Moreland is its people. It's diverse and multicultural community. People have come from all over the world and made Moreland their home. My favourite place in Moreland has to be Sydney Road. There's just so many beautiful shops and restaurants and just walking up and down Sydney Road, you meet so many people and you really see our diverse community reflected on this major road. My vision for Moreland is to create a sustainable city a city that is growing, but also provides valuable services to our community to enable that growth. As the Mayor, I'm hoping to be able to achieve a lot for our city, to really deliver on key services that our community needs. I'm really looking forward to opening up two new... Good evening, councillors, <clears throat> members of the gallery, and to our viewers live streaming. Tonight's meeting is the resumption of the meeting that commenced yesterday and was adjourned at 11 p.m. My name is Councillor Oscar Liz and I'm the Deputy Mayor of the City of Moreland. As the Mayor is not yet, not here yet, uh, in accordance with the meeting procedural local law, I'll be chairing the meeting until he arrives. It is my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's Council meeting and I also want to begin by acknowledging that we are on the lands of the Wurundjeri people and I want to pay my respects to Elders past and present. Members of the gallery, please note, Council meeting, this Council meeting is being recorded and web streamed live to Council's website and also Facebook. This recording will also be available as video on demand. Gallery attendees are advised they will be recorded during the meeting. Nick. Members of the gallery, in the event of an emergency or disruption, we may be required to take action to ensure the safety of attendees. Please follow the directors, sorry, directions. You can follow the directors too if you like. Uh, directions issued by our council security and staff. Thank you for your understanding and cooperation. The meeting yesterday evening was adjourned following the moving of a motion in relation to DEP 1 slash 20, the Transport Advocacy Progress Report, response to no, no, <coughs> excuse me, notice of motion 7119. The motion is on the screen. Thanks, Sally, and has been spoken to by the mover, Councillor Bolton. Uh, does the seconder wish to speak, and that is Councillor Martin? Yep, I'm happy to speak. Um, thank you. Just um, starting off where we uh, finished late last night. Um, I'll, I'll be really brief. Um, Councillor Bolton uh, really covered what we needed to, to discuss um, on this item. I, I think it really is, and it's, it's important to us, it's important to our residents, um, it's vital to the success of our transport strategy and, and what we want for our city, um, that we, we really do improve public transport um, right across this city, whether it's bus services, uh, east-west bus services in Faulkner, uh, Gowan Bray, uh, anywhere in the north, um, duplicating and extending the upfield uh, railway line, and also really looking to um, extend things like the, the 58 tram um, going up to Boundary Road. These are the things that we would like to see happen in our city, and, and uh, I would really urge uh, the state uh, and the ministers to give us some responses um, and to really work with us because uh, it's something that... We all want, um, and definitely all of our residents most certainly want as well. Thanks. Thank you. Do I have any speakers against? I just want to propose some amendments. Sure. Um, see if they're acceptable. Uh, they'll just come up on the screen. So I'm looking, proposing to remove dot point three. Um, as it currently is worded and have a new dot 
6.3 that reads, hold a public forum to update interested community members and councillors on the progress and responses to date of council's transport advocacy work. And then adding additional points four and five, number four reading, reviews our advocacy strategy to ensure engagement and partnership with the wider community, including organisations, community groups and transport advocacy groups. I just want to remove, yeah, that one to make that transport, thank you. And number five, um, investigate options for a public uh, repository of Moreland's advocacy work um, that Sorry, there's a typo there. That includes updated information on Moreland's transport advocacy strategy, its progress, and how people can get involved. Um, Councillor Bolton, are you happy to accept that? Amendment? I would accept them <clears throat> if you made point your point three an additional point. I don't want to lose the existing point three, yep. but I'm happy with your proposal. Okay. So if we made that a point four and renumbered everything else and. Happy with your suggestions. Yep, I'm happy with that. So, yeah, that's acceptable. Yep. Thanks, Councillor Martin. So we'll embed that into the original um, report motion. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, Councillors, we're happy to. Uh, Councillor. Um, yeah, I just, want to, I just want to say, um, if I may speak, absolutely with the consolidated uh, yep. motion as it stands. That uh, yeah, I, I agree with the comments that have been made last night by Councillor Bolton and tonight by Councillor Martin. Um, I would just urge people to have a look at the extensive um, list of advocacy that is part of this report, which went, it was part of the hundreds of thousands of dollars and part of the many, many months of work we did on developing the more integrated transport strategy. Um, and without the community support for these kinds of things, we will not get there. Because I actually say that this council has got a long history of advocating around better bus system services in the north particularly. Um, I know Councillor Andrea Sharon um, helped get a new bus service linked between Glenroy and Coburg back in, back in the day. We're going back a decade or more, but we are still woefully um, you know, serviced in our city with bus services and getting the links between our tram lines and our train lines. And I would just urge um, the community to have a look at the uh, attachments there regarding a night a light trial for Faulkner and another one for making better buses working in Faulkner and realigning those um, very long snaky bus routes uh, and getting people to and from where they need to go. The other one is also about linking people to the upfield railway line and getting those links there and I know that a lot of the advocacy that Councillor Bolton referred to last night in terms of ad duplicating the railway line is all about that because it's very poorly serviced. The government chooses, the state government chooses to put their money into multi-billion dollar roads which um, you know, the money from that could have easily fixed up the upfield line and another, another couple of railway lines without a blink in the eye before you had leftover money, but they've chosen to put it into car, carways and tollways. So we need to up our advocacy and I want to congratulate the officers for the work they've been doing and, and encourage the community to advocate to your local state MPs, your upper house MPs and your lower house MPs to get some of these better services for people in the north and to get those linkages happening. Without it, we're going to be um, a much poorer city and uh, we need to get that happening sooner than later. Thank you, Riley. And you, uh, yeah. Councillor Dawn? Uh, yes, so I'd also um, like to speak strongly in favour of this report. I think that um, it's a great piece of work that really highlights a lot of the transport advocacy work uh, that we have committed to as a council and um, where we're really wanting to go, everything from reduction of speed limits uh, to looking at um, increasing pedestrian crossings where um, on state-owned roads to um, many things spoken about already from the buses, particularly uh, looking at the uh, Night Alight, I think it's called, is a um, trial, looking at a 12-month trial in Faulkner where um, during the night people can get off the bus anywhere they choose. Uh, so that's something that, you know, buses is um, a piece of infrastructure and asset that we can be implementing really quickly. Um, the fact that um, one of, in Brunswick, you, you know, you can't get from the west side to the east side on a Sunday on a bus is just absolutely appalling. Um, I think that, yeah, we can easily do a lot better through um, the right investment and, and advocacy um, is a really important thing to be able to get us there. Another really important thing is having the community on board and um, being able to have some, some um, real, really key um, 
solid calls to action that we are demanding collectively um, as a whole. And, and that's why I've moved the amendments around how we can bring the community in uh, with us in this partnership in terms of what we're asking uh, from, from the state government mostly. Um, yeah. Thank you. Any further speakers? For or against? No? Can I put it to the vote, councillors? All those in favour? All those against? Carried. Move on to the next item, EMF 1 slash 20, naming of Tinning Street Park and West Street Park. Do I have a mover? Yes, please. please. Councillor Riley. On my feet. I'd like to uh, move the officer's uh, motion as, as put. I've got a second or I'll speak to it. Please go ahead. Seconded by Councillor Dorney. Thank you. Um, this is an exciting um, move tonight. Uh, one of the big goals for our council plan was to get at least two open spaces in our city because of the shortage of open space, particularly in the south, southern regions. And we've got two parks that we've acquired in Tinning Street and one in Breeze Street. And it's really exciting that we've had community vote for those names. And we're now wanting to name the Tinning Street one as Garong Park and Bullock Beck Park for the Breeze Street um, or West Street and Breeze Street Park. So uh, I just want to thank all those who participated in that um, online survey and uh, there was a lot of support for those, those names. Um, and I just would like to mention that, that Garong means, in Woiwurrung means wattle. Um, and one of the elders from the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung uh, has nominated this because it's easy for kids to say. So get your mouth around Garong because apparently it's nice and easy. And the other one is um, Bullock, Bullock Beck, which is actually a, um, a little bit of history that's been unfurled in just recent years uh, around the fact that this name for Brunswick, meaning flat country um, with scattered trees, was noted by Alfred William Howitt in his um, journals. And uh, he was an anthropologist based in the Gippsland region and uh, this was found in his notebook. So it's kind of a, a nice uh, boomerang effect in a way that it's come back to our our location and, and it, it's a good way of acknowledging the history, the pre-history, the pre-European history of, uh, of this city. Um, we often don't get to acknowledge our Indigenous peoples as much as we could. We've got lots of people who are Indigenous living here from all over the country, from very many different tribal groups and language groups. Uh, unfortunately, the sort of decimation and the, the change that's gone on in this city means that Moreland itself does have a, a good boy or wrong showing, but not perhaps as strong as it could. And it's, I think it's really important that we try and uh, re-establish those connections and support those community groups you know, by acknowledging them in this small way uh, as we open some new open space as a sort of acknowledgement to the, the way that those people have looked after the country for many centuries before uh, European settlement and also beyond. Um, we're also, just as an aside, we're also looking to engage with them in managing some of the new open spaces on Mary Creek. So there's some work going on there in terms of maintaining those spaces. So it's really exciting that we can do this. So I'll leave it at that and thank the officers and all the community for their input. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dorney. Uh, no, I think Councillor Riley covered it very well. Yeah, uh, Councillor Bolton. Um, I would definitely like to support this um, recommendation for these um, parks to be named Garing Park and Bullock Beck Park. Um, when I first became involved with the Ballot Maroot project, trying to save the Ballot Maroot school site for uh, First Nations Community Hub, what was very apparent from talking to some of the um, First Nations people is that often um, a lot of First Nations feel invisible in Moreland, despite the fact that you know we do have various plaques and so forth around. And often it sort of feels for the First Nations people that there's a lot of recognition of a lot of our different migrant cultures, which is very important and there needs to be more of. But um, there's often a feeling that there, there are those acknowledgements, but not as much acknowledgement about a lot of Aboriginal culture and, and naming and so forth. So I actually think this is important. and. I, certainly agree with the comments that Councillor Riley's made in that respect and I think we should look at more opportunities to um, do things with the Aboriginal community in this area, both dispersed First Nations as well as traditional owners. Okay, thank you. Uh, if there's no further discussion, I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? <clears throat> Carried unanimously. 
Um, the Victorian bushfire response DCD 1 slash 20. Do I have a mover? Councillor Bolton. And I'd like to move a slightly expanded resolution, and I also note that Councillor Bud had circulated, but I haven't got it to hand. She can't be here tonight. Um, mm. Something. On the screen. Is it on the screen? I'll be screen. happy to include that. Um, can I have a second? Can I have a second? No, Councillor Riley. Councillor um, Bolton moved the amendments. Um, Councillor Riley seconded. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Bolton. Okay, so my extra points. Um, I certainly support the um, comments in the report and the, you know, basic statement from council officers. Um, but I'd just like to add, well, firstly, I mean, I guess it's just noting the heroic effort by volunteer firefighters and other community volunteers, um, but also um, noting that bushfires destroy a large amount of public housing in country areas um, in East Gippsland, in many country towns, and uh, that, you know, really calling on the state government to make a commitment that the public housing be replaced with public housing um, rather than housing owned or managed by not-for-profit housing associations. And I guess um, not also not to see a reduction in public housing. Um, calls on the Federal Immigration Minister to communicate to asylum seekers and migrants who might be on various temporary visas requiring them to live in regional areas that they have a right to evacuate in response to the evacuation calls by emergency services. There were examples of refugees who didn't think they had the right to evacuate during the fire emergency as a result of the visas, the asylum seekers waiting for their refugee assessment. Um, uh, and then a last point, um, there have been a number of climate rallies um, in response to the bushfire crisis during the links between the climate crisis and the um, bushfire catastrophe and with many firefighters actually speaking out calling for serious climate action and there is a rally which has been called on the 22nd of February with um, all around the country with actions happening from Canberra to Sydney to Port Macquarie to Dar Darwin, Geelong, Melbourne Adelaide, Fremantle, um, all sorts of different areas, and um, basic based around you know about five basic points. Um, one is 100% renewable energy, no new fossil fuel or coal projects, um, a just transition for communities and guaranteed jobs for affected fossil fuel workers, um, fund our fires and support um, communities. Um, First Nations justice funding for Indigenous-led land management and make the climate criminals pay. So I just thought I'd mention it. I mean, really, the that bit um, is really just about um, council um, being able to maybe promote the rally on social media and on the website, along with other community events that it already promotes. Councillor Rowland. Thanks, Councillor Rowland. Yeah, can I... Um just, I'm just wondering if the mover would be amenable to changing um, man-made to human. Oh, yeah, I meant to do please. that. Yeah. That was in Natalie's Thanks. amendment. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. That so, was... uh, yeah, I um, support this motion. Uh, and I just would like to add that there have been a couple of uh, community meetings since um, the holiday period. One was actually held in the first week of January, which is pretty rare at this time of the year. And I think it... I attended that here at Coburg Civic Centre because we needed to bring the meeting indoors. It was going to be held down by the Merry Creek and it was very um, polluted and we had a lot of the, uh, the fire smoke and pollution from there which we didn't want people to be having a meeting in so we came indoors and there was a, a really a big gathering of 40 to 60 people, kids and families um, wanting to... Uh, respond to those fires and just the enormity and the breadth of the fires, which this country's never seen anything to this extent ever. And uh, it's really one of those extreme fire events um, that we've been told about and we've been, set, you know, scientists have predicted what happened and we're seeing more of these and we're going to have more of them. Uh, there was another meeting as well uh, a few weeks later related to the same issue in response to the fires for other green groups in, and climate groups in the city and uh, 
some of that work's coming out. So there's a lot of actions coming out of that. I won't go into that, but I do want to highlight the fact that one of the <coughs> key issues that I took away as a council was that many of our response agencies and emergency responders are only trained to actually respond to one emergency at a time and they're not positioned to be able to deal with, with two on the same day or one back to back. So I believe that we've got, you know, sometime in the future we're going to have a couple of these incidents where you have a, a major heat wave effect one day and then maybe you'll have some huge air pollution uh, effects another day or, you know, who knows what it'll be, a flood or a fire kind of coming on the back of another or even a terrorist attack. And we will not have the capacity as, as a civil agency to do that. And I just think we need to be thinking ahead and rehearsing and planning for this. The other is that I think a lot of inner urban city people are not training or preparing enough for these emergencies. I think our rural and regional folk do this on a regular basis with the, the SES and the CFA and so on. And I think they're much more rehearsed in dealing with it. And I think the complexities that are coming out of this are really something we need to look at as local governments, as a, as a Moreland City Council, I'd like us to do this um, work a bit more. Obviously, it's, it's a big agenda, but I think we need to start anticipating it. So I just wanted to remark on that, and I want to acknowledge the effort that Council's made over the holiday period, the, the sharing of our expertise with some of those other cities, our sister cities um, in Mansfield and around that have um, had to deal with this. Um, Sorry, it's, you know, I think it's been a very difficult time for a lot of people. So I think it's very important that we pull together and we work together to address that. Uh, so, yeah, I thank um, Councillor Bolton for the, the extra amendments and uh, Councillor Good for their input. I just think, you know, the grief and the loss that we're dealing with, we need to work on that as well as a council <coughs> because people are getting <coughs> anxious about a lot of things, whether it's parking or whether it's the attacks on the street that we're dealing with, you know, seemingly almost like on a monthly basis. And then you throw these large emergency events, disastrous events, it's really impacting on people in lots of ways. So I think we need to, to do what we can. Any further speakers? Um, I also want to acknowledge the good work our staff have done. We raised $1,400 at a breakfast. We also, our staff, well, I think we allocated a staff member to to go off and help with the bushfires and the likes of Therapanola Footy Club, we uh, we promoted their uh, their activity. But a range of um, our staff and and councils and office and and uh, also the community um, did rally together and uh, did support the uh, the bushfire appeals that were hosted all around the municipality. So on that note, thank you to everybody. Um, all those, can I put it to the vote, please? All those in favour? Passed. Uh, all those against? Are uh, you abstaining, Councillor? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, we're off to the next um, next uh, <clears throat> item. Bit interesting, this one. Uh, DBT1 slash 20. This is the Montfort Park Delawada Community Centre. Um, Can I move the... Yeah, there's a proposed confidential part three to the motion, councillors, um, and that's the procedural steps, of course. Uh, council moving the motion for shadows of part three of the motion that can only be considered confidential as it relates to that part of the item. So we need to be voting, sorry, debating and voting on parts one and two, which is what's in this report in front of us, councillors. So can I have a, you're obviously up, Councillor Riley, you're happy to move those two items? Yes. Yep. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Martin? Uh, thanks. I try, uh, oh, sorry, excuse me. Sorry, Councillor Davidson. Yep, Councillor Martin. Um, go ahead, Councillor O'Reilly. Seconded by Councillor Davidson. Thank you, Councillor Davidson. I, I say... Yes. She's Councillor Oh, Councillor... OK, you've handballed it on. OK, excellent. Sorry, thank, thank you. you. Um, look, I just... Uh, it's unfortunate that in a way that the meeting um, is held over two nights because former Mayor Councillor Halu was here last night asking questions about this or making points in the public gallery about it. And I, he is somewhat connected to it, but um, it, the key issue for me as a South Ward councillor is that the community that live in Henkel Street and, and Wendell Street and some other streets in this area 
have not been able to access this space, which was meant to have been made open and made accessible to the community. And what troubles me most is that a lot of the kids that are growing up there have only been able to go there on a very rare occasion. There was an, uh, it opened up last year and there was an opportunity for the community and the, and the Delawada community and others to get together and explore ways of, of doing this. And I want to thank the staff and the community that helped that um, along. But unfortunately, it's not easy for people to get in. And if anyone's been, it's like this high Woomera, um, it's like the fence outside Woomera Detention Centre. I don't know if people remember those. It seriously is. It looks like some sort of detention centre and it's most inappropriate. Probably the worst example of um, urban design I've noticed um, in in our city, probably, you know, one close to. There's probably a few others. but So uh, I just want to acknowledge the fact that a lot of the kids there will be very rarely get a chance. And by the time this is resolved, they'll have moved on, become secondary students and high school students or tertiary students, and they won't probably want to be wanting to play there. And the way this is dragged out is really um, quite sad. So I just want to um, <coughs> support this, that we actually get... Um, uh, and we note the work that the officers have done to try and get this moved along so that we can actually open the space up. And I know that people have been putting a lot of effort into it and I hope that it will happen. And I urge Councillor Halu to make sure that he does everything in his effort to, to make that um, come to fruition. The report goes into some of that detail and I'd just like to see that we get some um, progress on this and we, have, and we see some ways to actually open those gates up, even if the the Woomera fence doesn't come down, we actually get the gates open and people playing on those courts um, <coughs> and using them for, for a bit of fun because that's what we, we desperately need more open space. Um, so uh, thank you to all those officers and I look forward to seeing some progress on this um, hopefully in the near, very near future. I'll just note that it's former councillor Halu, councillor who's not a well, councillor yeah, Council, Former mayor, yeah. Uh, former mayor, former councillor. Councillor Davidson. Um, just briefly to add to what uh, Councillor Riley has said, I hope that we can get a really speedy resolution to this matter. It's gone on for long enough and I think the community is sick of it. I'm um, wanting to see this resolved very quickly um, with Council putting in force what they can to just deal with this as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Okay, uh, speakers. So I just so I just like to explain sure. um, my proposed amendment, um, and that is that I'd like um, you to put the motion in two parts. Um, yeah. That we debate part one being these items mm -hmm. um, in public, and then we lay my amendment on the table uh, for debate in confidential. Absolutely, I'm happy to uh, to accept that. Um, we'll discuss that. Do I need? I don't do I need a seconder. Do I need a seconder for that? No. I'm happy to second if so. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. To, to have it to have it discussed under confidential, um, move Are by council. Are we voting for this publicly? No, we're not voting for for the amendment. We're no. voting for this. For this, but no. we're, Councillor Martin's just um, wanting the it's amendment to be discussed under confidential, and we need a seconder. Councillor Dorney seconders seconds Councillor Martin's foreshadowed amendment to be discussed at the confidential part of the meeting later on this evening. So, if I go back to the original. Um, original uh, report that's on the table. Uh, do, I, do I have any second, sorry, anyone against uh, what our two speakers for? No? Happy to put it to the vote? Yep, all those in favour of the report? Carried uh, unanimously. Okay, um, the next item, DCF 320, the amendment, canopy tree planting in residential areas. Do I have a mover for that item, please? Councillor Martin, move. Move Martin, Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Erfunley. Councillor Martin. Um, I really don't need to speak um, to this one. I mean, this is a fantastic piece of work. Um, and, and really what we're doing as a council is, is really wanting to ensure that we are planting uh, more trees in developments um, and, and that we've got the canopy. We know um, that in the private realm, uh, trees are disappearing. We're doing everything that we can as a council to plant up our streets uh, with our urban forest strategy, but um, we do need to ensure that um, as part of planning applications that uh, we plant more canopy trees. Uh, and so I, I fully support um, uh, this amendment and uh, I really do hope that um, it does make its way through and, and, uh, and we see it part of our planning scheme. Thank you. Councillor, no. 
Do I have any speakers against? No. All those in favour? Carried. <clears throat> Thank you. DC F420, the tree protection and the planning scheme, response to notice of motion. Um, do I have a move for that, Councillor? Um, so I'd just like to move a procedural that we defer this report. Uh, do I have a, yeah, do I have a seconder to pronounce why? Yes. Any reason why Councillor Martin you want to defer that? Bear with me one second, I'm just bringing it up. Um, so my rationale is that I, I believe that um, we need further investigation into the bonds uh, versus uh, planning scheme. So I, I'd like to seek further clarification from officers uh, before we vote on it. Okay. Um, Councillor Dorner, you, you've seconded that deferment. Um, can I put it to the vote, all those that would like to defer this item to the next council meeting in March? Happy to defer it. Um, all those against? Uh, carried. So I just want to make sure I've got this right. Okay, good. Uh, Councillor Dorney. Councillor Martin, Councillor Dorney on that one. Thank you. DCF uh, 520, the council provided bicycle parking within primary and secondary schools. Do I have a mover for this, Councillor Martin? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to move uh, an amendment. Mm -hmm. um, and if it comes up, um, it was actually circulated um, with. Uh, Councillor Abood and Councillor Rafanli have um, added to this. So I'm just moving the complete uh, motion. This is different uh, to the officer report. Um, if I have a seconder, I'll, I'll speak yep. to it. Do I have a seconder for this amendment? Councillor Rafanli, yep. yep. So, so um, obviously uh, what we are wanting to see in the city is um, uh, you know, bicycle parking right across um, our city. We've set the ambitious target of 200 um, spaces per year or 100 hoops. Um, what this report is, is looking uh, into is whether or not we can um, meet some of that target by putting them in schools. I think that it's really important that as a council, uh, we make sure that um, these bicycle hoops um, are still available for members of the public. Um, I think it's a fantastic initiative um, that we could work with schools to um, increase uh, students um, cycling to school. But um, I, I do also think that it's really important that um, these bicycle parking facilities are made available to members of the public, especially in and around our activity centres, um, our shopping strips, um, points of interest. Um, and, and so hence my rationale for actually providing a cap um, of um, up to 50 bicycle parking um, hoops within schools, um, because I'm obviously not wanting to see that um, completely disappear, especially if um, the schools are wanting to make sure that um, the public cannot access um, these bicycle hoops. Um, and what it's also doing there is, is receiving a report, um, investigating the outcomes uh, of this. It's also looking at making it easier for residents to let us know um, that you want a bicycle hoop. Um, near your business, near your park, near your school, near your shopping strip, um, letting us know, um, investigating if we can do that via an online map. Um, you can already uh, register your interest for a bike hoop um, by just sending a, a customer service request um, here at Council. Um, and the final point um, here is also um, receiving a report to understand what limitations there are around our shopping strips um, and, and also ensuring um, that we do keep our shopping strips fully accessible uh, for those members of the community. Um, and so it's finding that balance between um, increasing bicycle parking while also maintaining DDA. Can I just clarify something, Councillor Martin? Um, we say within the, the primary and secondary schools, are we talking about inside the school or are we talking about the outside boundary? So Can I just confirm where... We're proposing this. Is it inside the actual school grounds? Yeah. So, so the report uh, doesn't go into because we're still going to have further consultation yeah. with yeah. Um, with the schools. Um, we don't have uh, anyone ready to go, yeah. but um, it's it's asking officers to investigate that. But point two um, is making sure that uh, they're also available for public access, yeah. um, and so we may be able to find some middle ground, uh, be it in car park areas or. 
um, in areas uh, that are available for the public to access um, after hours. I, I just think it's important that we also are acknowledged as a council for doing that. I mean, a lot of people know that schools are the state government responsibility, but if we're going to spend and have expenditure on this, then I think we need to be acknowledged as a council who's providing funding essentially to, to, to schools, in, to state schools. Um, Councillor Fanley, did you want to speak as a seconder? Yeah, very briefly. I uh, appreciate the uh, officers for bringing this report to council. Obviously, the more integrated transport strategy has set some big targets and um, they've tried to come up with some solutions to achieve those targets. But one of the core uh, aspects of MITS that I support is how do we actually encourage people to transition from car to bike, for example, public transport, but bike in particular in this instance. And that will be, for example, in Faulkner to Bombwick Street. Um, and uh, what do we need to do if there are challenges installing hoops, uh, bike hoops, what do we need to actually do to uh, alleviate those challenges? So look forward to receiving a future report to uh, articulate what those challenges are and then what we need to do as a council to address them. Excellent. Any further speakers, Councillor? Sorry, I just um, just looking at the motion, I just thought of make point one just a little bit clearer. Um, it might be a bit of confusion. If if we can remove um, uh, just if we can just say bicycle parking spaces instead of facilities and bicycle hoops, um, just to clarify that and delete the bicycle hoops, um, just to make sure that that's um, clear for, for officers. Is Councillor Earth family you happy with that that slight change? Can I just clarify from the councillors, what is a bar bicycle parking space when you're installing it? Space as to facilities um, so, or hoops. Oh, okay. Would that be you? Uh, oh, yes, that would be you, Kirsten. I can. The new if one. you want. Hey. Well, I'd like to hear from Kirsten. If okay, that's right. yeah. fine. Kirsten? <laughs> Give us between <laughs> spaces and facilities. Um, <laughs> so we'll put you on the spot there. Uh, through the Mayor, a space would be just a level area that's made hard. A facility would be a, a hoop or a, a thing that you hang them from, I imagine, um, um, if that's the clarity. <laughs> Can I clarify what that changes? So, so if we would like to make it crystal clear, um, the report actually says um, there's two bicycle parking spaces per hoop. Um, so if we install up to 25 bicycle hoops, um, that will uh, clarify... Um, yeah. Are you happy that? with that, uh, <laughs> Councillor Erfung? Are you happy with that slight amendment there? Um, I, I, I just because if we're moving, if we're changing this, then it's essentially an amendment, isn't it? No, I, I couldn't potentially accept it. But what was Councillor Riley? Councillor Riley? Yeah, look, I'd just like to suggest one more wording change here, which is to have it within and around primary and secondary schools, because I think if we can actually locate them around the public, outside public areas, it may actually serve people who are coming to and from, rather than just also internally. So. It, I think it'd be good if we just include it. doesn't have to be, but if we had within and around, if that's acceptable. Yes. Yes. That is acceptable yeah, to yeah, me. Thank yeah. you. you. You're not supposed to actually change your original, original estimate, but you can't change it, but we'll let that one pass to the keeper. Okay, um, all those in favour, uh, carry. Thank you. Um, DCF 620 Pentridge Heritage Interpretation Obligations response to notice of motion. I'd do like I, to move that we defer this item till do I have next, a second March. Yeah, to the March meeting. A lot of people want to know why. Do I have a seconder that's interested in yeah. deferring this? Councillor uh, Dorney? All those in favour of deferring this to the March meeting? Sorry, that's a oh, yeah, sorry reasoning. Council well, the reason is it's propose, proposing to remove the section 173 agreement from the title of the southern section, which was the one about committing the developer to create a museum. And I think the public hasn't had an opportunity to really see if what's been recommended is acceptable. So, you know, the agenda goes up on the website at Friday. You know, there is a body of people in Moreland who are very interested in this issue of trying to force the developers to respect the working class history at Pentridge. And I think it's totally acceptable that this should be deferred for a month to allow the public to have a look at the report. So more consultation, Councillor Martin. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. All those in favour of deferring this item? 
all those against. <laughs> Councillor O'Fallon, you don't want a long meeting next time, do you? Okay. Um, EMF 320, the proposed sale of council land adjoining Albert Street, Brunswick East. Do I have a mover? No, that one thing you've missed one first right of refusal 64. Oh, we did right. that last night. Did that one yesterday? Oh, that's right. We yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they yep, that's right. Well, good. So this is EMF 320, the proposed sale of council uh, land adjoining 45 Albert Street in Brunswick East. Councillors. Do I have a mover for that one? Page 179. <laughs> Councillor Irfan move. Do I have a seconder? Seconder? Councillor Riley? <laughs> I will second. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councillor Irfan, would you like to speak? Comfortable with the council officer's recommendation. <laughs> Thank you for your input, <laughs> Councillor Rowley. Well, I know this. <laughs> some people are not so happy about us taking this small strip of land and trying to resolve this issue. But I spoke to this last time, um, and I just believe that the principle of losing public land is something I'm not very happy about. But if it means that those funds are going to be resolved, and we're not going to keep having this problem go on for another five or ten years, I think it, it's um, in everyone's interest to sort it out. Um, and the sale of any um, land to this property uh, owner is going to be reinvested into Fleming Park. So I think, you know, in, in the end it means that we get a, a better solution for everybody rather than trying to fight out the legal battle over the boundary. Um, so, you know, it's not an ideal situation, but I think it's a, a good compromise in a way of trying to move on and um, get on with the work of upgrading Fleming Park and getting the master plan implemented as well. Thank you. If I don't have any further speakers, I'll... I I Councillor Bolton? Speak. Yep. Um, You're speaking for? Against? No, definitely dead against. Dead I against? personally think that landowners who've enclosed um, a section of public land behind their fence Shift, I shifted their fence to enclose that land shouldn't be rewarded by um, acquiring that land. And, you know, this I, I think this happens far too often at this council, possibly other councils as well. Um, I'm aware of a case in um, Glenroy um, where, or Hadfield um, where the landowner put a gate across the laneway so no one could use the laneway and then somehow it became adverse possession and they gained control of a, a public laneway. So I just think that I just um, am opposed to um, rewarding of um, private owners who, you know, but essentially steal our public land. Okay. If I don't have any further speakers, I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? <coughs> All those against? Might that be recorded, thank A division. All those in favour? Councillor Davidson, Councillor Riley, Councillor Erfanley, Councillor Dorney. All those against? Councillor Bolton and Councillor Martin. Thank you. Oh, and your vote. Mm -hmm. Was that? Your vote. And my vote, yes, of course. I, I was for, so carried. Um, the, the next item is DCF. Uh, 720, the proposed permanent closure of John Street in Brunswick East uh, at Albert Street. Do I have a mover? Councillor Riley, seconded Councillor Dorney. Councillor Riley? Yes, um, we've uh, been trialling the closure of John Street um, for some months um, and we know that there's been Im impacts on some of the other surrounding streets. But the report tonight um, shows that even while Hutchison Street was the one that's most impacted and we kind of predicted this has had some, its traffic volumes double and it's a very narrow street, it's got some very um, particular issues, uh, we're aware of that and officers are not currently recommending that uh, we actually do any further adjustments to Hutchison Street at this stage but I believe in the future we, we may want to, we will probably will come back and consider some other uh, measures that might help to ameliorate the, the use of that, that as an option for people. Um, so 
while we're getting the benefits for John Street and there's going to be improved connectivity between John Street for bike users and pedestrians, particularly as they exit Fleming Park um, uh, and going south or north along there, it, uh, it means that uh, there are some impacts on other neighbours which may not, um, may not all be positive, but I think the overall benefit we're going to get from this, the, the, the permanent closure of John Street and the improvements for pedestrian and uh, families using and accessing that site and <laughs> for the many thousands of people coming into the East Brunswick Village who will no doubt be wanting to get to the park because they want to get into the green space, although uh, there will be some, a lot of rooftop areas and so on in that, in that new site. It's um, important that we actually uh, move on and close this street permanently as part of our um, principles for the Mall Integrated Transport Strategy. This is another thing that we're wanting to explore more um, as we address the impacts of car use and um, this is one way that we can actually help to ameliorate that and, and bring benefits to our community. So I'm looking forward to doing it. And I'd like to nominate um, the South Ward councillors um, as the names that need to go in for the, the committee that will be hearing um, from people. And I'm no doubt we'll hear from some of the locals about that as well um, for that hearing, uh, which is set for Wednesday the 15th of April um, at 7 o'clock here at Coburg. Okay, that being yourself and uh, Councillor Dorney. Um, and Councillor And Councillor Tapnos is the chair, of course. Um, Councillor Dorney? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just agree with uh, Councillor Riley's sentiments on this. I acknowledge um, the increased traffic flow on Hutchinson Street also, uh, but um, also point that it still is well under um, the daily limit of 3,000 vehicle movements um, on that road. That said, uh, we really do encourage um, all community members to, and um, those concerned on Hutchison Street to come along and um, submit their uh, thoughts to us at this um, hearing of submissions and um, we'll, we'll take things from there. Uh, so very supportive of John Street being closed um, at this stage. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor uh, are you speaking for or against? Against. Against. Uh, and I will move it for, I foreshadow an alternative motion if this sure. one isn't successful. Mm -hmm. um, I was a part of the consultation with the residents uh, as part of the trial closure and I was supportive of that because I wanted the evidence to stack up as to whether the benefits outweigh the negatives. Uh, we've seen here in the report that there's nearly a doubling of traffic on Hutchinson Street. There was a clear community angst from Hutchinson Street residents and nearby residents and concern about the amount of traffic volumes that will come through that street. We've seen that that has happened. So my approach would be to encourage council not to approve the commencement process of shutting down John Street, but rather go back and consult with that community. I don't think taking a position of approving the commencement process to shut down a road is fair consultation. That consultation should happen first before you go down the path of uh, staking, stating a position of um, wanting to shut it down. So I don't want to take a position one way or another without consulting the community first. Therefore, I foreshadow an alternative motion that calls for a consultation with that community before we proceed with um, the process of shutting down John Street. I need a second of... It's a foreshadowed motion, excuse me. It's not an amendment to the to the motion. Um, a question? Yes, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Why not amend this uh, motion so that it um, uh, so that it's um, allowing for consultation before taking these steps? Oh, well, because it's a foreshadowed motion, it might right. be contradicting this motion. Because in this motion, it does it doesn't actually state that, does it? Um, well, the, this motion was really about proceeding with shutting down John Street. And I'm not in favour of that until we've done that consultation. It's kind of different. We'll, um, we'll vote on this motion first. So all those in favour of... Sorry, can I also acknowledge Carly Hannon uh, for coming into... Thanks for joining us this evening. Um, so all those in favour of this motion. All those against. Uh, lost. If we now go to the foreshadowed motion, Councillor Erfelman. I'd like to move an alternative motion. 
that council consults with the community around John and Hutchinson Street in regards to the trial closure of John Street and whether John Street should be closed to vehicles. Do I, I have a second? I'm happy to speak to it. Yep, do I have a seconder? No. By Councillor Carly Hannon. Um, go ahead, Councillor. I'll, I'll, I'll, uh, I've noted you, Councillor Riley. Go ahead, Councillor Earth Allen. As I uh, mentioned earlier, look, uh, I was part of the process of consulting the community. There was a lot of residents here from Hutchinson Street and nearby streets that were concerned about the closure of John Street. There just isn't enough information in this report other than the data of the car volumes and the data of the car volumes tells me that there's a doubling of traffic on Hutchinson Street. In fact, that might have been more on that. Uh, on Hutchinson Street. So therefore, I would prefer to take a conservative approach of consulting that same community before we go ahead and uh, close down John Street permanently. Is that that council consults with the community around John and Hutchison Street in regard to the closure of John Street before before permanently closing John Street? Okay. Um, uh, I'll just ask the second if she'd like to speak. You're right. Council, uh, speakers against? Councillor Riley. Well, I am just I don't know how many councillors have received any um, phone calls or emails on this because I'm in the ward. No one has contacted me and I believe Councillor Dorney is in the ward. Has anyone contacted you, Councillor? So I'm flabbergasted that we, these people have already, you know, they have engaged with us. They can pick the phone up with us regularly to actually extend this and drag the pain out. I mean, I'm all for more engagement, so, you know, you're obviously just trying to wedge us or something, folks, but I really, I don't understand what this is about. I'd love to know where the angst is coming from. Um, this has been on the drawing board for a long time as far as the council plan goes, so I don't understand why people are trying to delay the process. It's been quite open and, and uh, you know, I think we're quite receptive, so I don't quite understand why people want to do this when no one's actually concerned. You know, it's about my calculations, if it's from eight to midnight each day, it's, you know, it's, it's almost like 30 cars or, or more or something on average, you know, through those hours or going up to 50 or 60. But I don't think it's a huge pressure on that street as to why it can't can cope with the change. But anyway, I'm well, fascinated. Councillor Roll, it's interesting you say that because one of my neighbours in Eastgate Street, Pascovale South, um, actually came to my home and explained to me about this issue um, and his mum lives in that street and they're not really happy about the consultation process and I'm being honest with that. But anyway, if I... Um, any other further speakers for? Could I just Councillor ask? I'm not speaking for... It's or, just a, no, it's yeah. just a question, really. Um, yeah. I'm trying to understand... So uh, is it that we consult and then if... if the community is supportive, then we proceed with this, or will a report be coming back? I'm just not sure. Uh, like, we can consult, but what's the? I think we need the next step for, for clarity. Do you want to date perhaps in there, Councillor Irvine? Is there? Um, Councillor oh, Yep, yeah, Councillor Davidson. I think the wording presupposes that the street is going to be closed before permanently closing the street. So you're saying council consults with the community, and then what? Like. And then it says... And receives a report, if you'd like. Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. yeah. I, yeah they just want to know the outcome. What will the outcome yeah. potentially... What is it the outcome you're looking the, for, Councillor? It's the I'm, wording. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You're basically saying the street's going to close yeah. no, regardless of the right. discussion. That's not what I want no. to say, so... He wants to consult with the community before, before so let me that decision right. is made. Yep. Before a decision is made on closure of whether it closure yeah. occurs or something like that. Can we incorporate that? So what's that word, Sue? Thank you. Right. Um, yeah. Councillor, just come through me if you don't mind, That's otherwise. Yep. Council receives a report following consultation with the community around John and Hutchinson Street, Brunswick East, before a decision is made in regard to the potential, uh, to the permanent, before a decision is made in regard to the permanent closure. So delete the word potential. 
Are you happy with that, Councillor O'Fallon? I'm very happy with that. Okay. And there possibly needs to be a time limit so it doesn't drag out too long, because if mm -hmm. there is a lot of support for closure, yeah. um, there probably needs to be a time limit. So I probably... Uh, Did you want to perhaps maybe make it August this year? I just need to consult with the director on uh, yeah. what the appropriate time frame would be for uh, that consultation. Um, through the mayor, uh, the, the full team is fully engaged in the MITS parking rollout at this stage to, to take on the consultation. Could be a couple of months to fit it into the program before we could come back. All right, so, yeah. so would um, June be appropriate then? Uh, I, can, I, can I suggest we say July? Um, can I suggest July? Because there, there, there will be a number of things going on, especially with Alga as well. Uh, Councillor Riley. Can I just ask a point of clarification you, thanks, from, um, from the CEO or the officers as to what is the status of the temporary closure if we're going... What happens? Do we go to reopen the street and, uh, and open it up to traffic again before we get to this? I mean, I don't quite understand the process. Is that what's going to happen? Um, uh, through the mayor, it would remain until the further consultation has happened and a final decision is made. Open. Closed. Closed. Closed until. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's that? Okay. I'm happy hey, to have a writer reply okay. if you like. Yeah, go, go for it. In fact, I think a couple of the residents along that street that were affected at the community consultation just turned up as well. Uh, just to clarify, the reason why I'm moving this is there was. A lot of residents that turned up to the initial consultation that we uh, had regarding the trial, they were very concerned about the traffic increasing on Hutchinson Street. The data shows us the traffic has increased on Hutchinson Street. I was supportive of a trial so we can have an evidence-based decision. We've got the evidence. The evidence tells me that there has been an increase in Hutchinson Street. So I don't want to move a motion that says we go ahead with the permanent closure until we talk to the community first about how did you sit, how do you feel the trial went, what were the impacts to you as a resident, what worked, what didn't work, and maybe the council will decide to go ahead with a permanent closure, maybe it won't. But I haven't heard from the community yet that I initially heard from, and I'm not prepared to make a decision to move to a permanent closure until I have heard from them. So I'd like to receive a report after further consultation occurs with the community following the trial and then we can make a decision on the permanent yep. closure. I urge councillors to support this alternative. Okay. Um, if there's no further speakers, I'll put yeah, this... Yeah, I just will speak. Speaker, yep. uh, against... Oh, I close the debate. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. So you can't... <laughs> there's no right of reply. Um, all those in favour of the, uh, the foreshadowed motion? All those against? Carried unanimously. Um, Councillors, EMF 420, the financial management report for the period ended 31 December uh, 2019. Do I have a mover and seconder for these? For this, please. Moved, Councillor Carly Hannon. Seconded, seconder, Councillor Earth Family. This is the financial, financial report. report. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I thought you'd say yes. Um, if I don't have any. Because if I don't have any speakers, can I put this to the vote? All those in favour? Yeah. All those against? All those all those in favour again, councillors, please. Council Davison? Sorry. Yep. All those against? Carried. Notices of motion, councillors. Um, I ask that you please start by stating the motion, and if there is a seconder, you may speak to it. The first notice of motion we have this evening is the uh, the NOM 20. Sorry, 2 slash 20, identifying places and spaces for greening and social connection in the dual precinct. So I'll just... Council Dorney. Yep, I'll read the motion. Mm -hmm. uh, the council receives a report considering options for greening and cooling the dual precinct that includes... Sorry, I'll stand up. Yeah, thank you. But is not limited to an occupancy count of the Black Street um, car park and projects... Oh, sorry, I've got amendments to this. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so sorry. So sorry. Okay. Is it up there? Uh, uh, that's yeah. okay. I've got... Oh, so you've got six um, items on that. Oh, it's on the screen. Is that the... Yep, that's it. Is that up there? No, oh, sorry. sorry. No, sorry. sorry. Page oh, two, sorry. three, four. Lost it. Um, Mm 
someone help me look for it sent Monday Should night? we move to the next Could item? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll just... Um, um, we'll, just it through. we'll just postpone this for now. Yeah, Is that okay, Councillor? Sorry about that. All right, right. Councillor Bolton, uh, non-recognition of human rights for Julian Assange. Um, yes, so I won't read out the entire motion. Um, it'll Please come don't. up on screen. Um, so this is a motion which um, basically calling on, for Moreland Council to call on the federal government to take um, strong action to try and bring Julian Assange home. Um, uh, Austra uh, the Moreland Council has... Uh, well, actually, I should get a seconder if, um, yes, that would be if good. there's okay. one in... Do I have a seconder second. to this... Uh Notice of motion, councillors. Councillor Martin. This is um, Julian Assange was a local lad or someone who was around the um, Darabin Moreland council areas, I believe. Um, but it's a motion that's not taking a, a position on was he is he a nice guy or not a nice guy or whatever. I don't actually even know him personally. But um, it's basically um, looking at the fact that this is an um, a Australian citizen who's been um, facing extradition um, by the United States. He's not a US citizen. He hasn't... I'm not sure that he's even visited the United States who um, the US is trying to extradite for um, exposing US war crimes, um, you know, which really is um, of public in, public um, in, um, public interest. Um, a petition has been um, put into the federal parliament um, just about a week ago or so of something like 270,000 petitions, um, signatures. Um, I think one of the largest um, petitions in Australia's history um, and it's been put into both federal and both the Senate and the House of Representatives um, with the support of um, independent uh, MP Andrew Wilkie and others. Um, the support for that petition um, and that position in Parliament crossed all parties in Parliament so it wasn't just a one particular party that um, uh, put that position in Parliament and supported that petition. But it is very quite a dangerous legal precedent um, that the US is able to extradite someone who's not a US citizen, um, who is a journalist, um, for exposing US war crimes. And I think that is um, a, particularly, um, a particularly serious issue. And I think... Um, you know, and the Australian government should be doing a lot more to try and bring him home. Um, it's there is a very real possibility he could die in prison before even getting a chance to face court. And I certainly think um, the war crimes were exposed where was in a war, uh, an occupation of Iraq, which Australia had an involvement in. So I think there is an issue um, for Australia in this. Uh, but the motion is really quite simple. It's really calling on the Austra uh, Morning Council to call on the Australian government to take a stronger stance in calling for him to come home. Um, so I gather the Yarra and Darabin councils have already passed a similar motion. Um, and as the resident last night in the council chambers, uh, Rita Corr was saying, is that there is a precedent for this when the Moreland Council organised a big public meeting and lobbied for the return of Australian citizens in Guantanamo Bay, um, uh, David Hicks and Mumdu Habib. Thanks. Thanks, um, Councillor Bolton. Uh, Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, and I thank Councillor Bolton uh, for bringing this to the chamber. Uh, really, this uh, is five minutes of officer time to write one letter. Um, and issue a statement of support. It's support for both a journalist and an Australian citizen. Um, I don't support the persecution of either journalists or Australian citizens, and I think that he deserves the Australian government's assistance in this matter, um, and I think that this is a simple act um, that we can do as a council uh, to show our support to both journalists and Australian citizens abroad um, that are... Uh, delivering um, what is freedom of speech. Do I have any speakers against? Um, just to let you know, I won't be voting in favour of this because I don't think it's a council 
matter, I think the federal government, uh, through its immigration policies and procedures, would be dealing with this. Um, I'll certainly be voting against it. But any other councillor that wishes to speak for this uh, bomb? I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Mm, Carried. Uh, and one councillor is abstaining. Council, uh, anyone want to call for a division on that? I call for a division. Happy to call for a division. All those in favour? All those against? What's that? We just need to get the oh, excuse me. Yeah. All those in favour once again. Councillor Riley, Councillor Martin, Councillor Dorney and Councillor Bolton. Those against, Councillor Davidson, Councillor Erfanley and Councillor Yildiz. Uh, Councillor Carly Hannon uh, abstaining. Uh, yeah. Councillor um, Davidson, yes. uh, your motion about res uh, project respect. I'll hold. I'm coming back to you as well, oh, Councillor Dorney. Okay. Uh, I haven't forgotten. Okay. Huh? What's that? Yeah, okay. Jess, you're happy to do. Yeah. Yep, yep. yep. You're ready yep. for that one? Yep. Yeah, sorry. If you can. Oh, Councillors, um, on the uh, Julian Assange matter, um, because it's 4-3, uh, as the, because it's 4-3 in the votes, the the, uh, the mayor, of course, has two votes in the matter. Therefore, um, if I can ask once again for those uh, in favour of that non, notice of motion, please, once again. All those in favour? Okay. All those against? Okay. Carried. So it's 5 -3. So it's now 5-3. Okay. Division again on that one. Would you like a division yes, on that one? Yes. Okay. All righty. So um, that's fine. E everyone that voted uh, against that was uh, Councillor Davidson, <laughs> Councillor Yildiz and Councillor Urfanwa and the rest of the councils that are in the chamber voted for. I think you've got that, uh, Sally. Thank you. Um, I'll go to Council Dorney's, okay. um, <laughs> Council Dorney's notice of motion. Uh, the identifying, yep. the, the, the, yep. that one. Yep, the one in general. Uh, apologies for that, Chair and councillors. Um, I now have the um, wording that I wanted to amend um, point uh, two. So I'll, I'll just read it from the top again. The council receives a report considering options for greening and cooling the dual precinct that includes but is not limited to an occupancy count of the Black Street car park and projects any future demand giving the pending changes to the area. Uh, number two, in providing options for the conversion of the council-owned car park on the corner of Barclay and Black Street to open space, uh, considering A, so that should be con maybe considering, would that read better? Um, Considering instead of converting? Yep. Oh, no, just, yeah, ING on the end. Yep. Um, A, converting the whole of the car park into, into open space and uh, B, installing transportable garden bed infrastructure for edible canopy, canopy and Indigenous tree species as well as seating in a section of car park. Three, greening options for the western end of Barclay Street. Four, transferring the car park spaces from the council-owned car park uh, to becoming on-street car parking on Barclay and or Wilson Avenue. Uh, the timing, uh, six for five, <laughs> the timing and cost of these works and the impact on the current adopted strategies. And six, opportunities for engaging community members interested in helping maintain trees and streetscapes in the area. Do I have a second though? Councillor Riley, uh, stay where you are, Councillor um, Dorney, if you'd like to further speak. Yeah, so um, this has come out after speaking, um, meeting with, with residents in the area and um, you know, taking a walk of this 150 metre radius, um, which is precedented for some pretty intense development. Uh, we had um, a resident come and speak uh, to us, ask a question last night, stating that um, it's earmarked for around 750 um, apartments just in that little 150 metre meter radius. I'd also like to acknowledge um, the families that couldn't make question time um, last night due to having parent responsibilities. Uh, but 
it's just I think um, currently there's there's no real um, plan to, to look at greening options um, in this part of the city uh, that is you know really going to see that intense development and I think um, we need to just start looking at that work strategically, uh, particularly that um, that council owned car park, seeing if there is any ability um, to support the, the community with any greening options, looking at um, A, the whole car park, but also, um, you know, even a transportable space. Um, those car parking spaces can easily be transferred um, into the um, neighbouring streets uh, if the, the street is wide enough. Um, so this is just calling for a report just to look at all options um, for us to, to have a, yeah, think a bit more strategically about this area. Okay, thank you, Councillor Dawn. Councillor Rowley? Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Bolton, in favour or against? Uh, I'd like to make a small amendment um, to point four to add on at the end of point four um, uh, after um, uh, an assessment um, of dis impact on disability access. Councillor Dorney, happy for that to be um, amended? Okay. Um, oh, yeah, I've got, if that's been incorporated. Yeah, Councillor Rob, are you happy with that um, slight amendment to point four? Okay, Councillor Bob. Okay, I'm totally happy with the whole proposal about a new park. I think there has been a lot of agitation from residents for more green space in that area. Um, why I'm moving this particular motion is the resident last night was advocating maybe angled parking to accommodate more cars on Wilson Avenue. Um, I've became, become involved in looking at the dual precinct where basically disability access has been removed um, from um, the front of um, dual station uh, for people in wheelchairs. Um, but there's now big banker steps um, and before the big banker steps there's a bluestone curb you have to somehow pop your wheelchair over. Um, and also, I've been because I've been looking at that area. I've been noticing the foot uh, the footpaths are very uneven. Uh, not all due to council um, maintenance issues. Some of it's because of the um, old driveways and so forth. And so I think a lot of people do go on the road because it is a big wide road. And so I just and what I notice is where you get onto the onto the bike path to access the station. Um, is, well, A, impossible, well, difficult for someone in a manual wheelchair, but the only access is driving on the road on Wilson Avenue. Um, so the massive disability issues, access issues in that area, which have become worse since all their streetscaping, which is, you know, unbelievable in 21st century. So I just think that's my reason. I'm worried angle parking could make it more unsafe for... Um, people who might feel safer on a wide road um, than on the footpaths in that area. Okay. Um, there are no further speakers. I'll uh, put this on to the vote. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. A Councillor Davidson, Project Respect. So Council has uh, a short history uh, of supporting Project Respect. Back in two, uh, 2017, um, we have uh, provided them with um, a sum of money and again in 2018. This time, uh, Project Respect has approached Council to ask for a statement. Sorry, oh, I need a seconder. Yeah. Right, um, do I have a seconder? Yeah, seconder. I thought we would. Yep. Okay. Yep. What I might do with these, I'll ask for a seconder immediately and then we can go to, uh, to, just to, Thank to you. the report. Councillor um, Riley. Thank you. Oh, Councillor Davidson, Davidson. Councillor Riley, second. Yep. Thank you. Um, what Project Respect has asked Council to do is to um, provide them with a statement indicating their support of the work they do. Um, the motion and the statement reads that um, endorse the following statement. Um, Moreland City Council recognises that gender equality is at the heart of, the, of oppression and violence experienced by some women in our community. Council is proud to support the work of Project Respect in their role in supporting women in the sex industry and women who have been trafficked. Um, and uh, puts the, uh, an agreement in place uh, 
uh, defining that period of endorsement for project respect initially for three years with a view for it to be extended, but we do reserve the right uh, to remove that endorsement at any time. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Councillor Rowley? Uh, yeah, look, I'd, I want to commend um, Councillor Davidson for, for putting this uh, motion up. Um, I think it's important, given the, um, the amount of human trafficking that's going on around the globe and within our own country, um, for people um, of adult age and under, as well as um, in particular for, for women in, the, in this area, it's really important that we do what we can to support people in the sex industry as well, um, whether they have chosen to work in that industry or whether they have been sort of forced into it. Um, there's a consequence of the circumstance and how they came to be here or other other aspects of their lives. So I um, think it's important that we continue to step up and help people in these circumstances. It's part of our human rights ad, uh, agenda here and I um, really think it's a, a good move that we actually do what we can to uh, reach out and, and provide support for all sorts of people in our community. Um, and uh, even though we only have four licensed brothels, the likelihood of some other unlicensed ones operating from time to time is quite likely. So um, it's important that we do what we can um, uh, to support them. So thank you. Uh, thank you to Councillor Davidson for raising this. Okay. Any speakers against? I'll put that to the vote, Councillors. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Uh, Councillor Davidson, the, the next report, um, sorry, the next nom, would you like to withdraw that nom as it was discussed last night? Um, ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're withdrawing NOM 5 slash 20. Um, that brings me to NOM 720. Councillor Riley, the uh, Victorian Government parking fees and congestion levy not working for Moreland. Yes. Um, this is a seconder for this. Councillor Dorney. Go ahead, Councillor. Um, Thank you, Riley. Councillor Dorney, for seconding this um, matter. Is, um, while financially is not, not a huge um impost on the city. It is a matter of relating to parking, which is quite a topical matter on the meeting this evening. Um, the state government, for people um, information, actually take a levy, a congestion, or impose a congestion levy on some of our car parking in the, right in the southern part of, of um, the city, around the South Brunswick area. Um, this matter has been raised by council before with, with the state government. They take that levy and, in theory, they should be providing some of that money back by through hypothecation and otherwise returning that money for us to reinvest in other um, active transport, but it's never happened. Um, the impact here is quite small, but in other cities around uh, in Melbourne, so Melbourne, Yarra, Port Phillip, there's a much greater impact, but I do think that you know the cumulative impact of the loss of this revenue just going off into state coffers needs to be assessed and um, we should be doing all we can to do that. We've got more than enough bicycle projects and pedestrian projects that we want to have happen on our plan and anything we can get back from the state government to help us achieve that I think is worth us undertaking. So it's calling for a report to look at the implications of this and um, where it sits in our advocacy but also um, what the cumulative effect of that is in not getting that revenue. Um, I think it's uh, worth worthwhile um, it's, and it's something we can do, officers can do within their um, their time, so it's not a huge impost on them. Thank you, Councillor Dorn? Uh, yeah, just, just quickly, I really commend Councillor Riley on this report. Um, I just would like to highlight that um, Moreland currently pays between 40 to 50 per cent of parking fee revenue uh, to the state government. Um, however, none of that has actually um, is supposed to go towards sustainable transport measures, but but currently um, we've heard nothing um, and have received nothing. So, um, really looking forward to this report and what more we can do with um, you know those precious dollars that we need for all those projects that we want to happen in this city. Okay, uh, councillors, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Carried unanimously. Um, Councillor Riley, the local government bill opposing return to single member wards and seeking election. Would you like to move that? Yes. Thank Can you. I have a seconder, councillors? Yep, Councillor Dorney. Moved by Councillor Riley, seconded Councillor Dorney. 
Uh, yeah, look, just briefly, we did discuss this, um, some aspects of this topic at the last meeting, but I wanted to re-raise it because the Local Government Act uh, bill hasn't been passed yet. It is um, subject to debate in the, in the state parliament, but it has a direct impact on us in terms of um, the move by the minister without consult consulting the local government sector and, and it goes against the grain where we've been trying to, or well, having a lot of city councils adopt uh, multi-member wards, which is a little bit more like the Senate um, method of voting where you get more representation, more um, uh, diversity in, in the uh, de democratic processes. And uh, the minister's proposing that we go to single member wards but also has dropped the um, intent of um, improving transparency around donations um, related to uh, local elections and the funding of, that is contained there. So, um, which is a real shame that that has um, been dropped in, the, in, in that. So I think people are looking for more accountability, more transparency in their democracy. And I think that we should be advocating to, um, our local members who represent Moreland citizens and also to the cross benches in the upper house because they are going to actually decide the outcome of this depending on how the major parties go. They are a key influence. So I think this is a good way for us to actually reiterate our, our um, commitment to um, participatory democracy and getting more diversity and um, uh, in participation and, and so on in our, in our um, future. So the lo we're subject to Local government is subject to state law and they determine much of what we do. We're not constitutionally um, appointed and I think it's quite valid for us during these processes to actually have a position and to express that position um, whilst they're making determinations around how local government should or shouldn't work. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Councillor Dawley? Yeah, I'll... Yep. Yeah, I've probably covered it. Thank you. Well, happy to put that to the vote. All those in favour? Oh, oh. Uh, sorry, Councillor Martin. I, I, just, I just really wanted to make sure. one very quick point, and that is proportional representation is the most democratic form of electing your representatives. And any step away from proportional representation is an erosion of democracy. And I, I really encourage every single resident who is concerned about this, because what, what this single member member ward structure is doing is it, it is eroding democracy and I, I really feel incredibly strongly um, about this. Um, we need to have proportional representation and we need to not step away uh, from that. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, I'll put that to the vote, councillors. All those in favour? All those against? Can we have, have a division, thanks. Division on that. Um, everyone voted for except Councillor it's all right, councillors. We know everyone that seems voted uh, for, except councillor Irfan. Thank you. Um, councillor Bolton, uh, saving Gandolfo Gardens, I think this might be a bit too late, Just, but anyway. Well, that, that motion is redundant now, but yeah. there is a slight... Um, it's something which is really noting what council is doing already. If you, if you, want, I'll, I'll need a second of it. Did you want to? So you don't want to move this. You want to move an amendment. So this is that correct? I just replace that all together because it's redundant. The original uh, notice. Okay, of motion. so we withdraw. Can we withdraw this motion and then? Sorry, this notice of motion. Because the trees have all been chopped down. Maybe we just use it as an amendment. Um, she's moving a different, different yeah. motion that's up there now. Okay, all right, yeah. you can move a different... Um, well, it's you... really just noting that Council is investigating the potential second. removal of trees at Gandolfa Gardens that it believes may have been subjected to protection. And once the outcome of this investigation is complete, the report come back to Council on the outcome of the investigation or possible course of action. Whew. Did you get all that, Sally? Yes. Uh, yep, okay, good. All right, um, Councillor Riley seconded that amendment. Um, is there any discussion on that, Councillor Riley? Did you want to... Can I maybe speak to it? <laughs> yes, yeah, speak to it. Go ahead. Yep. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, um, the trees have all gone, um, but it looks as if 
uh, three trees uh, that were meant to be protected have been um, potentially illegally removed as well. Um, but that is really being investigated by council to see if these trees um, had a definite uh, protection um, category uh, or, you know, just looked as if they were pre um, pre entitled to protection. Um, but really, yeah, I can certainly understand the angst of residents after, you know, this, um, this massive, you know, group of trees, mature trees, which hosted so much wildlife have has been destroyed now, um, especially when it was needlessly destroyed, when we know there are alternative construction methods that could have actually saved most, if not all of these trees. So, um, but I think um, my reason for moving this, I know council officer already investigating this, but I think it really, the outcome of that investigation really needs to be public. I think that's really important. Um, given the lack of transparency of so many parts of the level crossing removal process and, and the fact that the LXRP has refused to engage with the community on the issue that there are alternatives in the construction methods. Um, now, you know, that in a sense is sort of <coughs> over, but there is the issue of trees that were mature trees, um, very old trees, which um, have maybe illegally been removed. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. Councillor Ro uh, Rowley, no? Um, I just want to acknowledge the work, um, Councillor Bolton, you have been doing on this. Um, it is sad what's happened, um, but well done to you. I know you've uh, been passionately advocating um, for the non-removal of those trees. Put this to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Carried. Councillor Martin, increasing bicycle parking at train stations. Um, yes, if I have a seconder, I'll talk to this one very quickly. Seconder, yeah, Councillor Bolton. Um, so this one's really straightforward. Um, it's, it's asking officers to undertake uh, what is just a count of secure bicycle parks uh, and non-secure bicycle parks um, across our city stations. Um, something that came out of the MITS process uh, and over the last few weeks was a number of residents um, raising with me that the reason why they don't ride their bicycle to the station is that uh, they're worried their bike won't be there at the end of the day. Um, we do have a parketeer um, up in Glenroy, um, and uh, by all accounts, the uh, parketeer secure bike parking provided um, by the state government is is quite successful. So I think it's it's really important that we uh, look at that um, a, as another option to um, assist residents um, with active transport in our city. So. Um, I hope that this report comes back um, and it really uh, also compares the train stations to make sure that um, stations in the north and stations in the south are, are equal as well. Councillor Bolton, thank you, Councillor uh, Martin. Can I speak as no? seconder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, go ahead. Right. Yeah. Um, thoroughly commend this motion. Um, I can already nominate one station where residents have been um, put together a petition to... Um, Vic Track, I think it's Vic Track is responsible um, for more bike, uh, for bike parking, uh, and that is Gary Station. Um, but I'm sure there are many stations along both, you know, both of the lines that go through our city that um, have totally inadequate bike parking facilities. So, um, yeah, certainly Gary Station is one to remember. Um, any speakers against? Any further speakers for? Happy to put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those uh, carried unanimously. Um, Councillor Riley demonstrating the revitalisation of Sydney Road, on yeah. Sydney Road. Thank you. Um, so this has been circulated and uh, it's... Just need a seconder on this. Um, do I have a seconder? Councillor uh, Martin, go ahead, Councillor Riley. I think it's been, uh, we've just um, adjusted some of the wording there, so um, it's not a new, yeah, thank you. So we just uh, amended the, the date has changed, so um, the date in the future, possibly sometime in March, but rather than just tie it down and just left it open. So this is to um, uh, allow some members in, the south part, some part of the city to actually take over some of 
the parking areas on Sydney Road. We've done this before as a council. We've joined other international efforts to um, return some of our streets to open space. And uh, the local member in this area is uh, working with people there to try and show people what is possible with some of these parking spaces. Um, it's only a temporary um, event, which is to happen sort of early one Saturday morning and to demonstrate the benefits of uh, turning some of our parking over to other uses. And uh, so we're just wanting council to um, support any applications that might be happening. It's going to be subject to Vic Roads or the Department of Transport and their processes. Um, but and most of the the fees will be covered. But if it exceeds five hundred dollars, we're just asking the council waive um, any fees that we have in relation to it, um, which is possibly not as much as that. But we'll, if there is, that we waive those fees um, to allow the community to to show what can be possible in some of these um, car parking spaces if we were to um, turn them over to more benefit. Uh, Benefit, beneficial uses rather than just parking cars in them. Um, and so uh, hoping that uh, this fits with our mitts and some of the direction of our parking strategy that would be something that we would endorse and encourage our community to do. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Um, if I don't have any... Sorry, Councillor Martin, did you want to...? OK. I'll put the put to vote, councillors. All those in favour? All those against? Carrie, division. division. Um, everyone except Councillor Carly Hannon voted. Carly Hannon voted against. Um, Councillor Martin, uh, Nom 1220, the cheap affordable power for Moreland, Moreland's low income and culturally <coughs> and linguistically diverse communities. Do I have a seconder to this Nom, please? Councillor Erfanler. Okay, so go ahead, Councillor. Um, uh, I'll. Um, just sort of briefly outline what this uh, report is that I'm asking for. Um, basically, uh, as, a, as a city, we really want to encourage um, residents to uh, put solar on their roofs. Uh, what our neighbours over in Darabin have been doing uh, quite successfully um, is running their solar savers program, um, which essentially is an agreement with the council um, to have an interest-free loan to allow residents to um, put solar on their roof um, and then that is paid back um, over 10 years uh, with the savings um, from that. It's a brilliant scheme um, and it's targeted specifically um, at low-income households. Um, what I would like us to do is to examine this um, but also examine the new environmental upgrade agreements which are coming for residential um, areas as part of the Local Government Act changes. So whenever that bill does go through, um, it will give residents um, the ability to uh, take out these environmental upgrade agreements, which is a very similar uh, in its uh, processes to the Solar Savers scheme. Um, I think that council should be taking a position on, on which one is actually better for our residents. Um, and then we should be really looking to um, accelerate uh, and expedite the uptake um, of those loans um, and, and really target our low income residents and particularly our cold community as well. We know that both, um, both groups uh, stand to benefit the most uh, from having um, solar power and also they are the ones that are often left out um, of, of state and federal programs. So, um, I really would like councillors to support um, investigating this further um, so that we can make a decision on what is best for our residents uh, and so then we can have a plan to target um, our low income uh, homeowners, our low income renters um, and those that are culturally and linguistically diverse. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Councillor Erfan? Yeah, thank you. Uh, obviously, I don't have a position whether uh, I'm in favour of EUAs or whether I'm in favour of a solar savings screen, but I am in favour of uh, getting the information so we can make a decision on if we are or are not in, in favour of either approach. And I understand council officers are already in the process of preparing that report, so this is a, a well-timed nom if that's the case. So look forward to seeing the information before we make a call. Thank you. Um, put it to the vote, councillors. All those in favour? Carried. 
I'll, uh, last one, the last nom is Councillor Dorney, your one, which is the increase in open space budget. Yes. Um, so no amendments, as it reads in the report. Yep. Do I have um, a seconder? Yeah. Councillor Bolton. Go ahead, Councillor Dorney. Okay. So um, I am proposing that Council um, 1 receives a report at the March 2020. Sorry, there is an um, error there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where will we be then? Um, receives a report at the March 2020 meeting that outlines opportunities for an increase in, open, in the open space budget for consideration as part of the 2020-2021 budget process that includes a increase in street tree planting and maintenance program to support an increase in survival rates of street trees. This isn't worded very well, but... Um, I think it might pass. B, increase opportunities to enhance curb outstand plantations that include more regular mulching, soil compost inputs and perennial plantings with Indigenous species. C, create a more formalised program for establishing rain gardens and other water sensitive urban design construction and maintenance, including wetland maintenance. D, retrial the adopter tree program utilising new technology to monitor and track sites and better engage people who are interested in helping maintain trees and streetscapes. E, um, the report will include uh, results of the Barrow Street tree planting trial, including um, I, if, if, if success is demonstrated, what costs would be to scale up to other parts of moorland. Um, and II, what policy changes would be required from open space road maintenance uh, to implement? What uh, policy changes would be required from open space and road maintenance to implement these changes to practice? Um, and number two, receives an update on the status and objectives um, and policy actions of the Water Map 2020 policy. Councillor, um, thank you, Councillor Dawn. Councillor Bolton? Um, I might Do you speak want to, to speak it. To <laughs> it's just the motion. Oh, you want to keep? Okay, excuse me. Keep speaking. Please. Just an amendment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hang on. Uh, you've got an amendment, can Councillor. Just, yep. Can I just suggest, or if it's acceptable to the mover and seconder, that we actually, after um, uh, in a after maintenance, that we just put in there, including watering. Um, I assume that maintenance is oh, watering, yeah. but I just want to be clear that yeah, sorry. looking at the watering regime that. as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Dorney. Okay. Um, so we have a, a goal to double the tree canopy um, in this city um, 10 years from now. By 2030, we want to see double the canopy that we're seeing today. Um, we are, we've come a long way, particularly in our in our public realm. But walking the streets, um, I, I do see um, that that improvements can be made. We're hearing, you know, from the community, it's something that co comes up time and time again that um, we need to be um, helping those trees that we do plant to to increase our survival rates. Um, I think that improving um, the plantings in things like our curb outstands, we have opportunities to get more indigenous species. Um, in those areas and also with the rain garden starting to um, move that water, um, clean that water as it's moving into our stormwater systems. We currently don't have um, a dedicated program for rain gardens. Um, I think although I, I'm convinced that we do need to, if we are going to achieve um, our goals to double canopy, that we really need to start looking at um, major increases into our budget to allow for that. Um, the, the upside of that is for every dollar um, in a study, it was done in the US, but they found for every dollar spent on tree planting and maintenance um, in Californian cities brought back um, just shy of $6 return on investment. So in terms of um, value for money, we can really, you know, planting more trees and making sure that those trees survive is really good um, bang for, for council's buck. Um, so this report is just looking at what options we have to increase. Um, the other, number point E, uh, the Barrow Street trial was a really interesting, um, I actually wasn't on council, I think you may have received um, a briefing uh, just maybe before my time, um, but it's a great partnership just for those um, in the gallery and watching at home, a partnership with um, uh, Melbourne University, I believe, that was looking at uh, 
street tree planting is something that is, you know, it's a harsh environment. Um, it has to copper lots, so those trees need to be a really resilient. So we've got to look at certain species. But how we passively harvest water to water those trees, um, this was a very innovative um, trial that looked at uh, a section of Barrow that started to um, conduct some research on what the best means of passively um, irrigate, irrigating those street trees was and what the outcomes. I haven't heard of, you know, how popular that was and if so what the implications for moorland can be in terms of maybe what we can save um, watering trees and I know we spend although um, communities say you know ne not necessarily enough we do spend a lot um, of a, our budget watering those trees um, but are there you know better and smarter ways of doing that with the rainfall we do receive um, you know annually anyway yeah thank you Councillor Dawn and Councillor Bolton I'll wait to see if anyone speaks again Anyone's any further any speakers against? Any speakers for? I think it's okay. I I think we could just vote. Yeah, okay. Um, all those in favour? All those against? Uh, carried. Uh, thank you, councillors. Uh, do we have any resisions? Notices of resision? I don't think we do. Uh, I now want to also go to foreshadow items. Um, I don't think we have any items that you'd like to foreshadow that may be the subject of the of a notice of motion for the next council meeting? No? No? Um, I, I would like to just foreshadow that I'll be looking um, at a no notice of motion around um, a budget item that looks at um, how we're strategically um, thinking about pedestrian um, safety in our city and, and how we might be able to uh, look at that um, at a strategic level um, within this year's budget potentially. So that'll be coming um, as a notice of motion to the next council meeting. Okay, thank you. As an urgent, um, be, as urgent business has already been considered, I will also uh, move to confidential business now. Um, gallery, uh, the meeting's really close to the public now. Could I please have a motion to close the council meeting to the public in accordance with section 89.2 of the Local Government Act 1989 to consider items that relate to contractual matters and matters that may prejudice council. Um, do I have a mover? Councillor Riley, seconded. Councillor Erfelner, all those in favour? All those against, carried. Um, I now declare the council meeting officially closed at 7.42. PM. To the gallery. To the public, of course. Just not, I mean, not